Hello everyone, I'm sitting here in an exam room with Dr. Gina Mora, who's in charge of the Transgender Specialty Care Center with Nebraska Medicine. And we've been speaking a lot today. There's actually two other videos that you can see, one on creating affirming healthcare environments, and two, information around hysterectomies and transgender men. But this video is gonna be talking about family and fertility options after you transition, which I'm so excited to be speaking to you about this topic because I don't feel like many people are talking about it. So I would just I'm going to jump right in with you. Yeah. Um, tell me a little bit about family and fertility options for yeah. transgender people. And I'm so glad that you bring this up because, you know, so often when people are first coming in for their first visit, they are just gung ho, ready for hormones. And I'm excited for them to get on hormones. Then we talk about some of the impact that hormones may have on their fertility. And it's sort of a piece that even though they may have researched hormones a lot, this has just not quite been on the radar. Um, and they don't want to slow down the, the process, but it's something that I wish people talked about more before they come in. So I'm really glad that you bring it up. Um, I guess to start with saying that um, we, I present it to folks with the best information that we have about the impact of hormone therapy on their fertility, which in the case of either feminizing or masculinizing hormones, is that we cannot say definitively that these make people sterile, that they or that they make everybody or even most people sterile. Um, but they can affect fertility for some people. And I don't have a way when I'm for seeing you and starting you on hormones, I don't have a way of knowing, are you gonna be a person that is, that has your fertility impacted long-term or not? So I then have to regard that anyone is starting on hormones may have long-term issues with fertility. Um, so let's just take the case of transgender women first. Mm -hmm. So we know that when they are starting on hormones, we know that their sperm counts are going to go down, frequently pretty dramatically, um, probably not to zero, although they could. That certainly has been seen. Um, but I say probably not to zero because I certainly don't want people counting on this as a form of birth control. If right. they're having sex that could lead to a pregnancy, I want them to, to not count on that. I'm just going to pause you for a second because yeah. this is an important point. I don't want to lose it. Hormone therapy is not birth control. For transgender men on True. testosterone, for transgender women on estrogen, it's not birth control. You have to have other safer sex measures involved when you're doing whatever you're doing, right? So I'm sorry I interrupt you, but it's so important to remind people right. that. Um, but that I would counsel them that um, in addition to it, probably lowering their sperm count while they're on cross-sex hormones, that even if at some point in the future, they were to go off hormones, which frankly most trans women do not intend to do, do not would not want to do, but if, if they were to make that decision, they could not count on their sperm count coming back up to a range that would make them fertile. Um, and so with that in mind, I counsel everyone to strongly consider if, if they have any consideration of wanting genetically related kids down the road or they just want to postpone making a decision about you know this this major part of your life that they freeze sperm beforehand um, and I and I want to emphasize to people that it's really it's to me it's a matter not that of course everyone wants genetically related kids they don't some people are quite clear in their understanding of themselves that they don't plan to have kids or that they would prefer to adopt kids and I I don't have any judgment on that whatsoever. To me, the important thing is that freezing sperm beforehand allows for you the option to delay making that decision. And that's what I think is important about it. But if, if you're going to do it, it's clearly most effective if you do it before you start any cross-sex hormones. Um, What's the cost for that? about roughly about a thousand dollars and then there's an ongoing like maintenance fee because you can freeze that sperm really indefinitely mm -hmm. um, but then you need to pay like a storage fee which is maybe 
hundred a year, something okay. like that. So a large upfront cost, small yes. in comparison over the years for yes. sperm freezing. Yeah. Right. Um, we don't do that personally. So that's but there are there's clinics in Omaha. Mm -hmm. There's clinics locally that do it, um, and there are even online services that do it. So for people that the idea of going in to to collect, do a sperm collection mm -hmm. in a clinic, if that is too off-putting, there are services where they can send you the kit with all the instructions and a freezer pack and all this stuff so that you can do it at home. It's at least the same price, but it just gives you that, that convenience. Um, for trans guys, it's a bit more invasive of a process. I'm going to say quite a bit more invasive of a process. Um, and much more expensive of a process. But the, the issue there is about freezing eggs. Um, this is not at all experimental anymore. I mean, this is over the, over the last five to ten years has become clearly established um, clinical practice that it is effective. Saving your, freezing your eggs um, is, is quite effective in terms of being able to use that egg down the road, fertilize it with sperm, and importantly, you yourself, if you still have a uterus, could carry that pregnancy, mm -hmm. or a surrogate, a, your partner or someone else, could carry the pregnancy. So the point for you as a trans man is that it gives you the option of having genetically related offspring. So even if the idea of you having a pregnancy you think is totally off the radar, but it would, it would continue for you the option of having genetically related offspring. Um, that procedure involves um, needing to go to a fertility specialist clinic mm -hmm. um, where you would need to receive injections of hormones to try to um, really kind of overactivate temporarily, but to kind of stimulate the ovaries so that they produce many eggs instead of what they would routinely produce, which is one a month. Mm -hmm. But they produce many eggs, and then they go in with a procedure that requires usually just sedation, and they go through the vagina and remove the eggs that way. So it's, it's somewhat invasive, but it's not like it's a major surgery or anything like that. Um, they frequently can freeze maybe, you know, between 10 and 20 eggs, um, and that can be the difference for somebody down the road. So again, similarly for the trans men, being on testosterone does not give you contraception. It probably decreases your fertility somewhere between somewhat and significantly while you're on it, mm -hmm. but not enough to call it birth control. Um, and we know that when guys have gone off testosterone, which some choose to do, um, they have, many have conceived pregnancies and have had children. Either they were pregnancies by accident or they were pregnancies that were planned. But we know that definitely can happen. But there have also been many men that they go off testosterone with the hope of becoming pregnant um, and find that their periods come back but are never quite regular enough. At any rate, they're subfertile. They're, mm -hmm. they're not able to get pregnant easily. And so freezing your eggs before you start testosterone at all would be considered ideal. Again, that's a procedure that takes at least a few weeks, you know, after your first visit with the clinic, with the fertility clinic, not with, not with my clinic here, um, and involves this somewhat invasive procedure and importantly is quite costly maybe around fifteen thousand dollars so that can really Ouch. be prohibitive for a lot of folks but you know important this is something that I've I've tried to make sure that patients are aware of before they even come in because by the time they come in to see me like I said they're so eager to just get started on hormones that they put this to the wayside but if you know they're in the time that they're waiting to come in to see me, this would be some a great thing to go and explore. You don't need a referral from me to go do it, um, but something that you could explore that as you're looking at starting transition treatment to get eggs or sperm frozen beforehand might be the right choice for you. All right. So having families is an option. It's important to be able to 
think about this before being on hormones, even though I know personally when you begin on hormones, that's tunnel vision. Uh, and also know that there may be opportunities if you, one, do not have the resources to be able to do this before you begin your transition, um, or two, you just weren't certain yet, there may be the opportunity in the future where you could still either restart sperm production or be able to harvest eggs. A little bit more complicated at that point, but it's still a possibility. Um, so if, as you age and then you discover you do want a genetic family of your own, um, it's great to know that these are actually options out there for you. Or you could be like me and just really love pets. <laughs> whatever you want to do. Uh, if you enjoyed this video and like to learn more, there are two other videos, as I mentioned at the beginning, one on transgender men and hysterectomies, going against <laughs> family plan and fertility, uh, and two, how to create a affirming healthcare facility. So Dr. Amora, again, thank you so much. My pleasure. Thank you, Ryan. Yeah.